Hello, Meteo Data family. Welcome to another amazing episode of our Python tutorial series. And in today's episode, what we are doing is to give you a quick guide or a quick help on one of the utilities. That's one of the packages, which is the XRE. Now, the reason why we are doing this as a team is because majority of our subscribers have noted that um, what we do is very good and it's more application ended and they would wish to understand the basics of even the XRE um, and so since they lack the understanding of the XRE from scratch sometimes it's difficult for them to understand um, clearly some some of the syntaxes and how to use them and so the team has put it together on themselves to come up with this quick go-to and then sort of a help on making use of the XRE package and whenever you are stuck anywhere you can always come back to refer to this and we believe that you should be okay with this all right so if you're new here don't forget to subscribe be part of this family let's grow together let's all learn and become better together and if you have any question you can always leave your question or your comments in the comment section that team would get in touch with you don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get prompted whenever there's a new video all right so we're starting off today's tutorial now whenever we talk of XRE in Python think of it this way X as a representation for multi-dimensional so XRE is just a representation of multi-dimensional array so you used to have data in say one dimension be it um, vector forms and then into two dimensions being um, matrices and then from there beyond that into multi-dimensional data sets because as long as um, research keeps advancing data keeps increasing it means um, we need to find more realistic states to um, conserve our data and of course data has multiple dimensions in which it would vary and so that's it so one of the functionalities of the XRA is to um, treat easily multi-dimensional data and so we would start off by importing our XRA and there are many ways of importing a package in Python I'll use a very basic one which is to import the package in this case XRE so all lower keys so we can just import this and then whenever we want to make use of the sub package it means we call the parent package dot the child package so in this case it could be XRE dot whatever the child package is and we can also make use of aliases so in this case aliases are just you know more abbreviated forms you are given to the lengthened name so that you don't always have to type the long name so think of it as nicknames um, which could be very you know simple simple expressions of or representation of an item so we import XRE as XR meaning whenever we call the alias XR you're calling the XRE package and that's it now XRE deals with data in this form we can have XRE data sets as um, XRE data as data sets or data arrays now a very simplistic way of thinking of it is that a combination of data arrays would make up the data set so we can have data arrays contained within a data set okay so um, so whenever we import the XR and want to make use of it so called XR since that's the alias and then we hit our tab we can see all the child functions under the XR okay now currently I'm going to read my data set we have a sample data which um, in here the data is just termed rainfall.nc which, which is a net CDF file so I'm going to xr.open data set on the net CDF file okay so that means I'm opening this data set and I'm reading the content now um, as a de facto mode we always have DS you know as a nomenclature for data sets so I can name this as DS in it and say maybe DS rain as an indication that this is a rainfall data set okay and then once that is done it means the data set has been read we can always check what the data is so ds underscore rain and we notice clearly that this a data set it has dimensions now think of it this way dimensions and coordinates are never the same all right they are linked and I see a whole lot of people getting it all twisted but there's a, a, a huge difference between dimensions and then coordinates so dimensions are just think of it as placeholders all right or the directions in which your data could vary now the coordinates are the exact 
values of those the exact values along those dimensions or along those directions so if I have a data set that's varying along X and Y okay X and Y are just the dimensions or let's say if I have data varying over longitude and latitude longitude and latitude are just the dimensions but the coordinates could be a fixed point so if you ever did number line when you have say a coordinate A being 2 3 okay the point 2 3 being 2 on the X and 3 on the Y are the coordinates but then these are also varying on the x and y dimensions I mean there's an x dimension of it there's a y dimension of it alright so the dimensions are just typically the directions in which your data vary or the placeholders and then the coordinates are the exact values along those dimensions on which the data varies okay so we have dimensions telling us that this data has a time dimension it has a BNDS which could be bounds okay and then it has a latitude dimension has a longitude dimension we have these number of points along this time dimension 2 along the bounds 12 along the latitudes and then 6 along the longitudes but then the exact values are not known directly from here but when we get to the coordinates you can clearly see that along the dimension time it contains date time formats okay and an example is this which is 1850 1st January at 1200 UTC so on and so forth if I drop down this you can see a whole lot more of them okay and same as the latitudes we can see now exactly the values along the latitude dimensions the longitude to same and then the bounds are actually the the time bounds and then we can actually skip them now one thing you can also clearly see from here is that you have your data variables and then the variables vary along any part any of these any combination of these um, dimensions or coordinates so I mean better still let me use dimensions in this place so varies along any of these dimensions so our main variable which is a precipitation PR varies along time latitude and longitude and that's it and then we also have attributes which are the attributes of the data sets and you can actually get a whole lot information on how the data was you know produced and then I mean quality control measures and a whole lot more all right so that is it now if I call out the variable PR which of course we can use two different approaches say the dot method that means the name of the file dot the variable okay there's one approach the second approach is to have the DS underscore ring which is the name of the file and then in the square brackets I call my variable as a string so that will be if I'm using the square bracket then it means this should be in single or double quotes okay alright and then once we do this you notice that this is no longer a data set there's a data array okay because this actually um, this how XRA treats the data array okay and data set is way more bulky and then has more properties extra so you can have a combination of data arrays being a data set alright and clearly from here you know that this data is precipitation it has this time dimension with this number of points latitude number of points longitude number of points and then the coordinates and then also some attributes alright so that's how we select our data array from the data set now in another form we can also after calling our ds underscore rain we can just have dot data underscore verse to show just the data variables okay and then we can clearly see what the variables are okay there are a lot more things you can actually do from this in fact we wouldn't be able to look at everything directly today I mean when I go to the attributes I mean there are a lot more you can get from here so I mean, yeah yeah there are lots more we can do to you know get to know what the variables are I mean and which ones we can call and all that okay all right so now we have our data set okay and then in this case I just want us to make use of the precipitation so let's call this RR indicating rainfall and then we call just our PR so now this is the data array okay and that's it now we can select an individual point because there's a graded data so in order to select a point let's say um, I have a point location which is say longitude 0 
and then latitude say um, 7.85 okay now we call our rainfall which is a data array we have over here and then we can add a dot cell to select okay and then you remember the dimensions there's a dimension of longitude latitude which you want to pull out so there's a point so it means we want the time series from a fixed point so we can indicate the longitude in here which is a 0 0.25 as the integer I mean sorry as a float the latitude as it is as a float 7.85 now let's try this if the point is not existent this will produce an error okay it tells you there's a key error because the data set hasn't got you know a point of 0 0.25 you look at the intervals and it's clear that you didn't have that so we can adopt a method of selection so we can indicate here nearest so that if the point is not located the closest point to it is selected and then that's it All right and so we can use this as a means of selecting the nearest point and this is how we get a point location All right and of course because we have now a point it's only varying over time and it's easy to just you know visualize this just add a dot plot and you get your time series showing rightly so for you okay so this is just a way of making you understand how to select the um, data by you know points and we can also do an area um, selection that's copying by a rectangle a slice so what we have in here is our, our, our let's um, assume we have okay we have our RR and then dot cell we are selecting and then across the longitude want to select a longitude of um, say negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 okay so this is a range and then latitude also we slice across a latitude range of say 5.5 to 8.5 okay now in this case we don't need the nearest because this is a range so it selects it cuts out that range for us okay and that's all we have um, okay I do not have a longitude here it says zero let me check what the longitude is okay longitude range let me see the slice okay let me increase this up and say from 1.5 to 1.5 yeah okay so I think the range I selected wasn't um, huge enough to get any um, correct location all right okay so with this now we can have an area right and so we have still a 3d in this case this we've cropped out a region and found the time series of that region okay and so we can pick any of I mean of course I mean we'll come back to another approach of selecting the time so let's say I select just the first dimension that's position one so exactly I have my three by two and then the time is picked at, at the first time bear in mind the dimensions are you know we can separate them with commas so these are my three dimensions when I enter there is the same as saying okay the first position on the time all the dimensions or all the values along the latitude all those along the longitudes all right so this works the same as just having this all right. and so that's typically how we perform an aerial selection which will come back to use it now let's see how we apply functions to XRE data I mean um, typically you would want to let's say I want to sum up my data along the longitude so I have my ds underscore rain dot sum this would give me just one value if I just perform this okay it just gives one value uh, okay yeah, I was supposed to use a data array so let me use the rr so if I perform this this produces just one value okay and if I want the sum along a particular dimension now think of it this way whenever you are performing a function along one dimension 
think of it as you are collapsing along that dimension and you preserve or conserve every other di dimension. So if I should find the sum along the dimension of latitude, it means I would be having an addition along the la latitudes and then the longitudes and the time will be conserved. So if I do this, I'll be left with you know, a time and then a longitude um, dimension because we've uh, um, sort of added all along the latitude. Okay, so think it, think of it as a box, a box with a height, with a length, and then the breadth, and then we push it all into one side. Okay, we compress it along one side. In the end, we'll be left with just a cross-sectional area. That's how this works. And then we can also perform same for the averages. So let's say we have a RR dot mean, and then we find the mean along the dimension of say uh, time. Okay. And so we've found the average across the time, and so we are left with the latitude and longitude. And this is typically more like a climatological information. So, of course, we can visualize what we have, okay? And that's typically how we get to apply some of these functions. There are lots more you can work with, okay? Now, let me quickly address the time series. Um, so... Now we have a ds underscore rain. Sorry, let me just use my rain for the rr. So rr has a variable or it has a dimension time. So rr dot time tells us what the time components are. Okay, so now we can equally select for a particular period. So let's say I have this and then I select a time of say 1990. This gives me only 1990 data sets. Okay, so you notice that the number of times um, steps have reduced. This is just typically for a year, all right? And that's it. So you can select um, a certain time, a specific time by this approach. In fact, if you want to go even down to a month, so let's say March 1990, you can just go with this approach. And then we can see that this is only for March 1990. Okay, if I want just the first day of March, then I can sub down and then I still have that. All right. Okay, so that's how you select your respective time. You can also again slice across a particular time. I mean, it works quite similar. And then another thing before I come to the grouping. Now, the same way if we pick that RR and then we pass in here time, it works the same as RR dot time. Now, the beauty of this square approach is that with this, we can just extract, you know, a particular sub portion of the date time. Let's say I'm only interested in the years. I want to see the years alone. So time the year would pull out only the year components. And this will come in necessary or it will come in so handy when you want to um, extract along a particular range. I've, I've seen a couple of comments asking how to select, you know, particular seasons and the rest. This comes in handy when you want to do that. So similarly, we can just time dot month. And then we see just a month alone. Time dot day would give us just a day alone, exactly. And then time dot season should also give us just a season in the form of DGF, MAM, and so on. Yeah. Okay. So it's also very easy if I have this. Okay. Now before I go here, there's a way of extracting data or subsetting your data using the where method. So if I have my rainfall, for instance, RR, I can apply the dot where method and indicate, for instance, I'm only interested in where this is greater than, say, 2000. Okay, so that means aside the ones that are above the year 2000, so from 2001 all the way to the end, which would have data, all the rest would be represented as nuns. That means they will go missing. But then I can pass in a replacement, say maybe I want those to be minus 999, and that's it. Right? So that means conserve all these ones, and then all the ones that are not there, or the ones that don't meet this criteria, change them to this alternative. All right. Another option too is um, rather than doing that, we can equally drop the missing data using the drop equals to true 
and then we are left with only the ones that we want okay you can see clearly from here this reduces the year to only the ones that meet the criteria okay now let's see I uh, want within a particular range it's also possible to do this where I have this where method and then and then pass in the same approach so let's say in this case it should be between 2001 and say um, 2009 okay so if I have this this will pass every other thing to none except the ones within 2001 2009 all right now in this first case if I drop on this it means the ones that will be satisfying this condition all right um, I think yeah we can actually do it we can actually drop here and it works because this will still be true within this part and this also can then again be applied and we have just the range of periods we want now if you are not comfortable with this another approach is after performing this function well you want the missing to be still left intact still left intact and then now you want to drop so we drop our any does a missing along a dimension of say time and then this also works quite similar okay all right now we can also perform some grouping so if I I can group along various dimensions along the longitude latitude time but in this case I'm going to use the time series um, grouping so let's say I have my ring in this case okay now I can also perform a group by method or apply the group by method and indicate that group this on a time by month okay so I want this to all be average on just January February up to December I just want the January to December alone not the I mean respective of the year okay so this tells us that this has created data array groups okay which have been grouped over the month of these classes so what it does is that whichever one falls in January goes into the class January February goes into the class February and then we can now apply a function onto them okay so let's say I want to find the average of them along the dimension of time okay and this changes from the time to month leaving us with just 12 months and it gives us the average values for you know all the classes and we can then again do same for let's say year okay so we group them by the year and we have the year groupings and then bear in mind at this, at this point it's still the dimension time has still not changed so we would have to find whether the sum let's say I'm doing the yearly totals or annual totals here I can find the sum over the time and then I have the annual totals okay all right and that's it now let me indicate that um, the data we had for rainfall had a unit of kilogram per meter square per second so we had to convert that which we didn't so of course you know there's the unit so the values will seem a bit smaller but then if you want to convert them to I mean millimeter then it means we'll have to use the conversion factor and then that will give us I mean our millimeter per hour information alright so now you notice from here that when we did the group by especially by the month we only got 12 months what if, what if I want the month of if I mean of every respective year I want them to be stored intact I mean another way to do that is to use the resample method so I can call my rainfall and then just add a resample okay and then I indicate clearly that okay resample along the time and then I indicate a frequency that okay resample this on a monthly basis say M all right so this will create the resampling group and then I can tell this to find the respective monthly sums I can see clearly that it does every month so in this case you have the sum for every month and of course we can again do same on a yearly basis on you know the respective I mean interval basis or the classifications and that's it All right so this is just a quick startup on XRE I'm sure when you take time you get more and then um, this is just what we have for you today hopefully some other time we might come to you with some extra and yeah 
that's it do have a wonderful time learning do have a wonderful time applying and then i hope that with this this should make all the other tutorials quite easy and very comfortable if you are new don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notification and be part of the family and then leave a comment leave your questions also in the comment section and the team would respond to it don't forget to like share and then i mean let's get interactive let's get others also on board all right so see you on the other side bye bye